Hi, ya karate fans, and welcome back. Today on JC Van Dammit, we are watching the 1994 film Street Fighter. I have had several of you recommend this movie to me. I really hope you all enjoy this video, but there is a lot to talk about in this one. So let's go get our Hadouken on because this is Red Eye Reviews. Okay, yeah, there are so many things to talk about in this movie. So we are going to sprinkle in a little bit now. Our superstar, Jean-Claude Van Damme, has officially hit his diva stage of his career. Because according to interviews, he would show up late to set, he would show up with alcohol, he would show up with drugs, he demanded an entire gym be put into his hotel room, so he was kind of a bit of a monster. He later revealed that he had a super bad drug problem during this time in his life, and that he was doing roughly $10,000 worth of cocaine a week, which is, is a ludicrous amount of drugs. That's, that's too many drugs. And because of this addiction, the studio actually hired a wrangler to keep an eye on Van Damme. But it turned out the guy they hired was like a partier himself and a horrible influence on him. So it made the problem even worse. And then next, we also need to realize that Street Fighter is owned by Capcom. And they basically, they finance the entire movie themselves. But because of that, they also controlled every aspect of the production. So they gave the director, Stephen E. DeSouza, a budget of about $35 million. And hiring Jean-Claude, the cocaina, cost them about $8 million already. And then you hire Raul Julia on top of that. And your casting budget is like basically zero at that point. So pretty much every other role had to go to unknowns or super small timers just to fill the cast. So we will see a bunch of characters. Some of them make very brief cameos. Some people you're like, why is that random guy in boxing gloves? He's a character in the game. So I apologize if I miss some of those cameos, but I will try my best and I'll point out a lot of them. We find ourselves in Southeast Asia in the nation of Shadaloo. Civil war has erupted between the allied nations and an evil drug lord, General M. Bison, played by Raul Julia, who is a legit badass. Uh, sadly, it actually came out later that he had stomach cancer at the time of filming this. He had lost a ton of weight. He was very sick. He did, however, take the role because his kids were a huge fan of the video games and he wanted to give them something nice. Sadly, this movie is dedicated to him as he passed away shortly after filming this movie. Now is your chance. <laughs> Pathetic. But on a bright note, he could kick some serious ass. My God, that, what a quick fight that was. We cut to the town and we see JC VD. He plays Colonel Guile. He talks to Bison on a broadcast and Bison demands 20 Billion, that's with a B, billion dollars, or he will kill a bunch of hostages that he has, and he'll start, like, attacking the world or, you know, something evil like that. We also learn that one of the hostages is JC's friend named Charlie. When Bison puts this together, he sends Charlie off to a lab to become his first super soldier. We then see two con artists attempting to swindle an arms dealer. So, introducing Ryu and Ken, and if you know the video games, I shouldn't have to explain who these guys are. Surely you're not afraid of your own weapons. <laughs> they brought like Nerf guns to an arm deal. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know what you thought was going to happen. You didn't think they would test these out? I mean, kind of silly there, boys. So yeah, they get caught. They have to fight the boss's right-hand man, Vega who in the video game is dope, but in this movie it looks like he could barely land a backflip. So I think you're okay. I think, I think you could beat this guy. <laughs> he does have his super cool little blades that he uses in the video game. That's pretty cool. But before things really get going, JCVD drives a goddamn tank through the wall and arrests everybody for violating the town's curfew. So we cut to them all in prison. We also see that Vega has made, like, the prison shank equivalent of his claws, which I would argue that these are cooler than the ones that he had in the previous scene. 
Ryu and Ken, however, are given a homing device by JCVD, and he wants them to kind of be his, like, super sleuthy secret agents and stage a prison break so that they can join up with the bad guys and track down this guy and Bison. And during this escape, JCVD gets shot a bunch in the stomach, and he appears to be dead, but, you know, we'll see. Cut to, uh, I don't know, like an evil, evil circus. I don't know what this is. They have events. They have helicopters. There's magic. There's a circus tent. We see the bad guys are here. We also see Chun Li, whose father we learned was killed by Bison. So she is attempting to get revenge on him with her two friends, E Honda and Balrog. And then to maintain their cover, though, Ryu and Ken thwart their plans to try to like bury themselves deeper in the organization and help JCVD. Who we cut over to is alive, cause it, duh. I mean, dude, the man has an eight million dollar contract. Like he's gonna be in the entire movie. So Chun Li gets sent to Bison's room. Her friends get put into a dungeon. However, while in the base, Ryu and Ken do help break them out. In the meantime, JC has made it back to his men and informs them that they can all go home now, or they can go fight Bison with him. And yeah, they all go with him. Of course they do. We then probably get the best line in the entire movie, in my opinion. My father saved his village. You had him shot. I'm sorry. I don't remember any of it. The most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. To me, it was Tuesday. It's awesome. I, I think this is everyone's favorite line, personally. But Chun-Li kicks his ass because she is a good fighter. The rest of the gang shows up, but Bison traps them inside of his room. It's gas! Oh, no! We gotta get out of here! Yeah, he has a poison trap in his own bedroom. Dude, that is hardcore. I mean, I guess when Ambien just doesn't cut it anymore, uh, try knockout gas. That'll do it. We cut to the doctor, who has been turning that one soldier Charlie into that super killing machine. But the doctor is a good guy, and he wants to try and save as much humanity in the man as he can. Six. Estimated time to repair on that. However, he gets caught trying to do this, and in that scuffle, Charlie gets released and saves the doctor's life. We cut back to JC, who is starting his assault on the base in a stealth boat. A stealth boat that sucks it's so bad like we're gonna go stealth but then we're gonna blow up the radars and that's gonna immediately give us away oh yeah and then when they cut the footage you can just see the waves like you know something's right there jc sneaks down into the lab he sees what has happened to his friend charlie at the same time bison has decided to unleash his new monster on the hostages but who comes up through the floor instead And damn, Mm. he challenges Bison to a one-on-one fight because he's a badass. And then he orders his men to go free the hostages and escape the facility. Bison agrees to the duel, but during the fight, he overloads his facility. So like the whole place is going to explode and kill everybody soon. Hopefully we get out in time. We cut to Ryu and Kin. They're fighting a couple of these henchmen. Zangief is fighting E. Honda. There's a few other cool fights. And after a long fight of ups and downs, JC defeats Bison. And he escapes the facility just in time. And also, Zangief uh, learns that he was working for a bad guy. So he changes sides like really quickly at the end here. (laughs) Everyone gets out. The bad guys die. We then end with this awesome scene of all the characters together. And then finally, finally, a post credit scene. Good morning, General Bison. Yeah, they did post credit scenes back then. And that's cool. World domination again, part duh. But okay, that's the movie. I went somewhat quick through it because uh, I wanted to talk more about the movie's production. Because Capcom gave them a really short time frame to make this movie. So, like, a lot of compromises had to be made. And they were filming in Thailand, which is horribly hot and humid at times. So the entire cast lost weight 
There was a threat of a coup in the area at the time, so the military had to close off all the roads, meaning that everybody was transferred by high-speed boat to the set. So when they got there, they were all soaking wet. The building they used for all the Allied Nation scenes had a tin roof, and not only a tin roof, but a tin roof with holes in it. So when it rained, not only did it leak, but the sound was deafening and would halt production even further. Now let's take those issues and add even more. Because while filming, several crew members got skin rashes from the Chow Farah River. Those needed medical attention. One of the line producers had a goddamn heart attack during filming. And another one wasn't used to driving on the other side of the road and turned headfirst into traffic, hitting a bus. He lived. He just sustained serious injuries and he had to be taken out of the movie. Oh, and also one of the actors was busted by customs for possessing steroids. I don't understand. I know you don't. So they had to go bust that guy out of jail. So because of all of these setbacks, Stephen E. DeSouza employed a trick that he called the old John Ford trick, which literally meant tearing out a page from the script to get the schedule back on track, which led to even more confusion on set. And in one interview with Roshan Seth, who is the guy who plays the doctor, he said he had absolutely no clue who he was or what his character was supposed to be doing. And in one scene, he was supposed to be angry, so he he just was angry, but he had no clue why he was supposed to be angry. He said in an interview, and I quote, I was supposed to be a mad scientist, I thought. Uh, what sort of science am I supposed to be doing? And what am I mad about? So I just stopped thinking. They told me what to do, and I followed the instructions. End quote. So that was already a mess. Director DeSalza even deferred his entire salary of the movie to ensure that the cast and crew even got paid during all of these issues. And despite all of that, the movie still came out fairly watchable, I think. And Capcom themselves also loved the movie. Like, they couldn't get enough of it. They were beyond thrilled. I have a couple more things to talk about, but we can do that over in Red Eye Reacts. Okay, something I actually loved about this movie is how they incorporated the video game in to as many places as they could. And I do think it was done very well. Like Bison's evil controls are old arcade machine buttons. This barrel that Chun-Li hides in, if we pause here, says Capcom. You know, the company the game's from. And a lot of the characters actually do some of their signature moves from the video game. Guile does his flash kick. <laughs> Bison does a Psycho Crusher. Vega does his Rolling Stab. Ken does a Spinning Uppercut. E Honda does his Hundred Hand Slaps. And Ryu does a Hadouken? I, I think this is supposed to be a Hadouken. There's like a weird flash here. I'm going to go with that's a Hadouken. And then that last little bit of the movie, it goes without saying, but this Street Fighter team pose, these are all their victory poses in the game. So that's pretty cool. My favorite character has to be Zangief, and here is why. Quick, change the channel. I see you later in the commissary, eh? Bison. He's a bad guy. You know this, and why do you serve him? Because he paid me African fortune. You got paid? That was beautiful. And for those of you that aren't huge movie buffs, you might not have noticed this, but this radio DJ, who's played by a guy named Adrian Cronauer, is heavily basing his character off of Robin Williams from Good Morning Vietnam. Good morning, Shadaloo. It's a cool little tribute. Didn't anyone tell you there's a curfew? No one tells me anything. There is a 7 p.m. curfew in Shadow City. Oh, he's not dead. He's just really coked out. Is this a joke? Bison dollar will be worth five British pounds. Hey, we I did think it. we made every single one of our patties dollars back, You're buddy. damn right. Thus creating the self-sustaining economy we've been looking for. If we just redistribute these, then people will continue to drink for free. Okay. 
How does this work, Mac? The money keeps moving in a circle. But but we don't have any money. How does this work? I don't know. I thought you... I thought you... What? Okay, thank you so much for watching. That is everything. I hope you enjoyed it. For those of you that recommended I watch this, thank you so much. I haven't seen this movie in a long time, and it was so cool getting to watch it again and looking up all these trivia and facts and reviews. Super fun. So thank you. If you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, like the video with the thumbs up thing. Leave some comments. Let me know what you thought of this movie. I know I forgot a ton and I left out a ton. So if you guys have trivia or facts about this movie, put them in the comments. I would love to read them. We will see you next time. And until then, stay happy and stay healthy.